We've been joined by Houston coach Tony Levine. The Cougars, as we said, are 7-1 and overall, 4-0 and in the American Athletic Conference. Houston was in action last week against USF. Houston won the game 35-23. to uh, This week, Houston is at UCF. That will be a 7 p.m. Eastern time start on ESPN2. Uh, coach, thanks for joining us on the call today. If you could take a minute to tie up the uh, win against USF this past Thursday. Uh, and then tell us what you look forward to in the battle for first place this Saturday uh, on ESPN2. Well, I've said it, uh, I guess, before, and I'll say it again. Another good win uh, for a program last week, uh, you know, over a talented and well-coached uh, South Florida program. Uh, we were able to uh, uh, go on the road recruiting Friday as a staff, gave uh, everybody in our program Saturday off, and uh, uh, looking forward to, to a, uh, another tremendous challenge this week in a very experienced, well-coached, uh, established program uh, of Central Florida. Any questions for Coach Levine, please hit star one on your telephone to join the queue, and then the operator will introduce you. And we'll hear from Paul Norio with Orlando Sentinel. Hi, Coach. Um, I guess, first of all, could you just tell me, what, what are your impressions so far of UCF, what you've seen from them on film? Specifically, I guess, to start defensively, this is a, a very young team, but they seem to be opportunistic. What have you seen lend to their success when, you, when you've studied film with them? Well, I think it, I think it, uh, Paul, it goes uh, actually further than this year with with uh, both our program and in Central Florida uh, transitioning into the American Athletic Conference uh, this season from Conference USA. We've got uh, uh, great familiarity of each other. I think going into this year, and uh, again, Coach O'Leary has done a just a tremendous job uh, since he's been there, and uh, you know that's a program that. Uh, Certainly, in, in in the conference USA was was uh, at the top every every season, and uh, you know they've done a great job in recruiting. They've got uh, tremendous speed, and and the, the thing about uh, uh, his program and this team in particular is uh, it, it's they've got the reputation of being extremely well coached. Uh, they they don't get. Uh, uh, foolish penalties. They tackle well. They they understand their assignments, their responsibilities, and uh, you, you know they make you earn uh, every yard you get against them offensively. So in my in my uh, four years here as an assistant, we played them. Uh, I want to say twice. Uh, we're never uh, able to uh, beat them. And uh, again, uh, very physical. Um, in, in quick up front, and uh, they just they uh, you say they are opportunistic, and, and it's a little bit uh, I guess like our, uh, us defensively right now in terms of creating turnovers. I mean they they they're making their own luck, so they're not uh, uh, the, the, you know getting those uh, the way they're playing defensively and the turnovers they're creating are certainly are not happening by accident. You touched on on the history between the two teams. Do you do you think back to '09 and that uh, upset win that UCF had, and, and maybe a little bit of retribution or, or chance of revenge for the program to come in and, and play spoiler in the same way? No, I don't. You know, this is a completely different team. I mean, our, our two quarterbacks, uh, you know, were still wearing pull-ups when they went to bed in '09. You know what I mean? So <laughs> uh, that, that we're, we're not. Uh, nobody in our program, student athlete wise, uh, was here at that point. Uh, you know, so it's a it's a completely different uh, team here, and uh, you know on their end, uh, certainly Coach O'Leary still there, and they've got a little bit of staff that turnover, not much, but but um, you know he's really really done a great job establishing that program. Um, they've got uh, you know definitely have an identity, uh, and they recruit outstanding, um, and uh, you know so again it's it's uh, it's completely new. We hadn't played them. Uh, and you may correct me, Paul, if I'm wrong. I don't think we played them uh, since 2010 when they came here, and, and David Pyland was a was a true freshman for us. So, uh, and then again, beat us beat us in a, and I think it was a close game, but they beat us there, and they had the, uh, the, the I forget the defensive men's name. I don't remember, I, I don't forget yeah, his number. Chris Miller. Miller. Yeah, if Miller yeah. had an interception for a touchdown. So, um, you know, again, it'll be two uh, outstanding football programs. Um, uh, competing Saturday night, but uh, you, you know, again, it's, this is a, this is a coaching staff uh, that I have a lot of respect for, 
uh, and certainly a program I do as well. Uh, lastly, you, you touched on, or they touched on John O'Corn, just how successful he's been as a true freshman. What have you seen from him in his ability to respond? I imagine you're seeing defenses trying to do a lot of different things to confuse him because it's his first season in college football. What types of things are you seeing defenses try to do, and how has he been able to respond so well and, and remain composed and, and, and have that success uh, that he's had so far under center? Well, what you, what you just asked in the question is exactly right. We, a, a lot of teams, you know, naturally – when you, when you look at your upcoming opponent and they're, and they're starting uh, an 18-year-old true freshman at the quarterback position, defensive coordinators start licking their chops, if you will, and okay. let's give them some different looks, let's disguise some things, let's give them some new blitzes and, and possibly some new coverages and try to confuse him and, and keep him off balance. So he's seen all that, um, and you know he's a young man that, uh, I've said it here locally to the media, just the poise, the way he carries himself, he, he doesn't he doesn't act... Um, uh, like an 18-year-old true freshman quarterback, uh, he gets, he's, he's very, very humble, uh, but he but he is confident in his ability, and he makes mistakes, but he does continue to learn from the mistakes. So he's, you know, he played some in our opener against Southern, uh, had to come in the Temple game when David Pilon, our starter, um, uh, suffered an injury, and then and then in game three ended up uh, becoming our full-time starter with David out uh, uh, with the career-ending injury and has gotten better every week. So he's, he's a different quarterback now than he was back in the first part of September with all this experience he's gained and the improvement he's made uh, learning from his, his mistakes. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you, Paul. And next I'll move to Zach Ellis with Sports Illustrated. Hey, Coach, uh, obviously, like you were just asked, John's been huge for you guys at quarterback, but where else on offense have you been pleased with maybe where you guys have grown this year compared to last year? Well, uh, Zach, last year um, we started a lot of young uh, skill guys offensively, if you will, surrounding our quarterback. So that, a year ago, Deontay Greenberry was a true freshman uh, wide receiver for us. We started another true freshman, Larry McDuffie, Last year, we started a, a true freshman tailback in Ryan Jackson. I shouldn't say we started him. He played significantly. Uh, Ryan Jackson did. We had another redshirt freshman last year that we converted from safety in Kenneth Farrow. Um, we had a, a true sophomore last year in Daniel Spencer that was a high school running back, uh, moved to slot receiver. And then we had a junior college transfer, Xavier Maxwell, that just got here uh, a year ago, August, and played significantly for us. So the, the the thing we've had this year is we've had, for the most part, we've had consistent play at the quarterback position, but all those names I just mentioned a year ago were brand new to our program, um, and some brand new to the position. They were asked to play for us. Well, then they were able to go through our winter uh, off-season strength and conditioning program. They went through spring practice. And then they went through, uh, you know, the summer voluntary workouts. And the players around the quarterback position um, all have improved tremendously. So you look at a Deontay Greenberry, a Ryan Jackson, all the names I just mentioned, Daniel Spencer, who I think is our most improved player on the entire uh, team, uh, you, you couple really just what I said, consistent and good decision-making by the quarterback position and imp an improvement in the skill guys around it, and that's what you're uh, that's what you're seeing this season. And Mr. Ellis, were you done with your question? Yes. Thank you. We'll move on to Joseph Durate with Houston Chronicle. Hey, good morning, Tony. Good morning, Joseph. Hey, I was just wanted to follow up. Just you know, this is the second week in a row you guys will be playing uh, in prime time on national TV. Just wanted to get your thoughts on. Uh, you know, what that does for the program and the fact that, you know, if, if it's not so much well-known outside of, you know, the market, you know, what this does for your program to be, you know, two weeks in a row like this. Well, it's great exposure for a program, and it, and it helps uh, uh, as much as anything in recruiting. You know, we're going we're gonna to primarily recruit the state of Texas, going to Louisiana a little bit, um, so it gives uh, our young men at any age, you know, there might be, eighth graders that will be recruiting in a couple of years, they get a chance to watch University of Houston 
on television. So I thought Thursday night was outstanding. I felt like going into the game, because it was Halloween, there'd be a lot of families trick-or-treating, come back home, turn on ESPN, and watch Houston play South Florida. And I think to, to get another opportunity this week uh, to play on national television on Saturday night, you know, gives certainly our fan base that's not going to be traveling to see the game an opportunity to watch us. But again, you know, exposure for recruits to watch us play, and then and then the ability for us as a staff when we talk to these young men in high schools and junior colleges about coming here, telling them that look, you're going to have the opportunity to be seen and be recognized on national television um, if if you come to our program. And, and Tony, uh, just you know, not to single anyone out on defense, so the, the amount of turnovers you've had, but for Bob Stewart in particular, uh, three interceptions, forced several uh, fumbles. Uh, he's among the national leaders. Him specifically, um, is there anything that he's done that you know kind of goes into that old concept of the, of the team and the turnovers with, with him specifically? He's, you know, he, he's a young man, and we've got a number of young student athletes in a program like this that just loves to play football. And he's always around the ball, and, uh, you know, he understands the importance of creating turnovers. And it's something, you, you know, it's, it's, it may be seen as a foolish statement I'm about to make, but again, you, you're going to play how you practice, and in practice, he is constantly stripping the ball carrier or attempting to strip the ball carrier. Um, you know, spring full speed to, to the ball. He's our best. He's one of our best tacklers on defense. So, again, uh, he's a young man that uh, you, you combine the fact that he loves to play and the fact that he practices 100 miles an hour and practices those techniques on a daily basis. It, it's transferring into his play on the field on Saturdays. Thank you. Yep. If time for one more for Coach Levine, please. Okay, we'll move to Ryan Dunleavy with New Jersey Press Media. Hey, Tony. Brian, how are you? Good. Quick, uh, it's kind of a bigger picture question, but I know your offense is designed to, you know, obviously rack up big yards and big points, but did you have a feeling coming into this year that you guys were going to have a big offensive advantage against teams that, you know, you don't see year in and year out and maybe are less equipped to face the spread than teams you were playing every year and were familiar with it from Conference USA? I mean, Obviously, specifically the Rutgers game a couple weeks ago comes to mind. Well, uh, going into this season, that's a, that's a good, interesting question. Uh, going into this season, I did feel like our style of play in all three phases uh, was going to be a little bit unique to this conference, a, a little bit. And, uh, you know, again, we, we have a history of being able to score points. And, again, we don't huddle. We go, uh, you know, we try to go quickly, if you will. And uh, when you go against programs that, that tend to huddle and uh, – uh, run the football, you know, eat up the clock, uh, you know, have the time of possession statistic. Uh, sometimes if they fall behind, um, that's not really their – trying to play catch-up is not really what they do. So, uh, again, not to say we're just trying to get a bunch of points on the board right away, but we felt like – I did feel like going into the season if we played some of these new opponents and were able to, to uh, increase a lead in the second half – and, and make them kind of leave their comfort zone of, of running the football, huddling up, using time off the clock, uh, you know, that may that may be to our advantage. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Coach, we thank you for the time this week. Look forward to talking to you again next Monday. Likewise. Thank you. All right, and that is Houston at UCF. That will be Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2.